Hey you, and welcome, my name is Mike, and in this old video, I have a story about one of them, uh, Nepo babies I keep hearing so much about. This is an ongoing story in Hollyweird, haha, <laughs> and it is about what a filmmaker, creative director, TikToker named Samuel Haskell IV has allegedly done. See, Sammy here was a creative genius, according to himself. Uh, maybe you'll agree or not, let's see. Shouts out to the waiter at the restaurant above Nordstrom's for just like completely burning the shit out of my filet. Like, what kind of a monster are you, homie? Wow, that's great stuff. He was married, amazingly. And in early November 2023, his wife and in-laws, they disappeared. For a bit. Please subscribe to see new videos every week. Now, let's give it a go. We will start this story in a little old place called Tarzana. Is it as cool as it sounds? Let's see. It's a suburban neighborhood on the northern side of Los Angeles. It's a place with good schools, amenities, and so it's a fairly wealthy place to live. If you're among the 25,000 people living there, you're probably doing all right. A quiet suburban family area with shopping centers, stores, and yes, it is named after Tarzan. Edgar Rice Burroughs used to own the land. Just as Tarzana edges his way up the mountains and into the Toponga State Park, well, on a street called Cold Stream Terrace, you'd find the Haskell family, made up of Samuel Haskell IV, his wife May Lee, and their three children, Sam, James, and William. What a gang the Haskells were, specifically Samuel. He's a bit of a, he's a, bit of a character, all right. But first, I want to talk about his wife, May Lee, 37 years old and from China. May Lee moved to the United States in the mid-2000s to study accounting at Cal State Northridge, not too far from where she would eventually live in Tarzana. It seems that her family were like fully supportive of her moving from China to the United States, because as you know, education ain't cheap, and it especially ain't cheap if you like come from outside the country to it. And her family were so supportive that her mother and her stepfather, they actually sold their home in China to help pay for her tuition. Her uncle, who was already living in Los Angeles, he got a job at a local restaurant. He was giving her money all the time to help pay for her education. It seems like the entire family really viewed Mei Li as like a bright spark. And by all accounts, she was. And so they all wanted to help and sacrifice to help her succeed in her dreams. Mei Li ran her own business called the Haskell Consulting Group, where she would help foreign students with their applications to the top American universities. Other folk from China wanting to study at Harvard, MIT, whatever, she would help them through the entire process of enrolling. By all accounts, this business was quite successful and made the family a bit of cha-ching. Now, you might have noticed what her company was called, and that's because while studying, that's when Mei Li met Sam Haskell, and they hit it off. They married not long after graduation. Mei Li had her first child in 2010 when she was 24 years old. I would say that together they purchased the house in Tarzana, but that does not seem to be the case. It was in May's name and May's name alone. The mortgage was $7,000 a month, and May was the one paying. And so, with two more kids coming along, things were hectic. And so May's mother, Yang Zhang Wang, and stepfather, Go Shan Li, would move in with them. And of course, move in with May's husband, Sam, too. Sam didn't speak any Chinese, May's parents didn't speak any English, but it seems like he didn't care. Because Sam was all about his creative vision. Samuel Haskell the Turd, well, not the Turd, although maybe the Turd, the fourth, was born in 1988 to a man who was very powerful in the creative industry. Sam, a guy who takes all his fashion advice from Zoolander, is the son of also Sam Haskell, uh, Sam Haskell Sr. Well, look at you, he was big in the biz! The entertainment industry, I'm told they just call it the biz. He was an Emmy Award winning producer, he worked at the William Morris Agency, which is a big one. He had clients like Dolly Parton, Ray Romano, Martin Short, George Clooney, big dogs, and then he went on to form his own company. Magnolia Hill Productions, and he helped make some award-winning Dolly Parton shows for Netflix. He was also, formerly, the CEO of the Miss America organization. Was for a few years before he had to kind of uh, step down. See, some emails leaked about old Sam Haskell Sr. here, and they weren't very nice emails uh, about how he was talking about, you know, the, the talent, the women, the Miss 
state, whatever. Uh, just kind of like a bit of, you know, sexist kind of stuff, slut shaming, fat shaming, all that kind of stuff. And uh, apparently it cost some of the contestants actually their livelihoods. So he kind of had to, you know, <laughs> sorry about that, I'm kind of jog on. Anyways, Sam Haskell the fourth was his kid and boy oh boy was he a cool ass dude. In his head, I mean. Remember, this is a 35 year old man. Going for that like Bradley Cooper burnt out look, like I woke up feeling like a piece of burnt toast. Like I don't wear like clothes from the latest designers. Like I'm kind of doing like a, like a Claire Danes Homeland situation where I just like wear the same outfit every day. Like my resume says unhappy, bitter, resentful, um, and like really good at ordering off the menu. Like imagine me showing up at work and then here's the plot twist. I'm totally fucking superficial. Ask if I want a glass of wine? Like, ew, what? To the left, like no, but also like kind of down. Yo, real quick, what's good? Like, I went to a tech conference real quick, you guys, by mistake. And the number one thing they talked about was consistency, like be consistent. Now I'm consistently never gonna stop drinking. Okay, after watching a few, he kinda rocks. Yo, shouts out to fist bumping the sushi chef real quick at Nobu Malibu. Like, letting everybody in the restaurant know, like, you fools might be bae but like, I'm fam. It's next level cringe and I salute. He's incapable of beginning a video any other way than shouts out to, which I love. Yo, shouts out to Bella Thorne. Yo, shouts out to my, yo, shouts out to Chris Pine. He shouts out real quick. Yo, shouts out to, shouts out to Claire Danes. Hey, shouts out to, I just wanna say shouts out to the shouts out. Yo, shouts out to Peloton. Man, that's embarrassing. Thankfully, I don't have to begin every video the same way. Moving on. Sam got his start in the biz, let's be honest, thanks to daddy, daddy's friends and daddy's wallet. He began as a camera operator, then worked for another agency doing all sorts of videos and so on. Sam had his own production company called the SB Group. See, Sam Haskell often went by Samuel Basinger for some reason. And his major thing, his art, was called Tragic Streets with a Z, so you know he's pretty cool. I want to create visuals that move boundaries by bringing millennial artists together. Fair enough, that sounds awful. And he filmed a lot of fashion shoots, music videos, and he was currently working on a feature film, not a movie, ladies and gentlemen, a film called Harvard Law. This is what happens when a drug dealer moves in with a national best-selling fraudster in the mansions of Palos Verdes. That is according to the blurb, and it looks awesome. You should just kill yourself. DA, search warrant. Fuck the police! I had sex with that girl in the Abercrombie store. What more do you want from me? From the stellar acting and writing to a guy I think is trying to OD while wearing a backwards Randy Moss jersey, I'm locked in. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm not really into this. You know, I want some action. I want some blood. And to that I say, oh hell yes, yeah. Samuel Haskell has got you covered. With this clip from hashtag the circle, hashtag demon hills. Whoa, you got dudes, you got muscles, you got swords. So things got weird on November 8, 2023. That's when May Lee's uncle, the one who was also living in uh, Los Angeles, he couldn't contact his niece, May Lee, or his sister for a couple of days. So he, he logged into his WeChat uh, profile, WeChat's like a Chinese social media site, and he went onto May Lee's profile. She'd been on there 10 years, everything was erased. Her profile was completely blank. No friends, no pictures. And he thought this was really, really weird. It was like somebody had logged in and just erased her entire account, but her account was still there. Erased all, everything from it. Very weird. That was odd, maybe a glitch, right? After all, he didn't have any reason to suspect anything was that strange other than not hearing from them in a couple of days. He knew May, he knew, you know, her mother, stepfather, and he knew, he knew Sam, right? He, he would always say Sam was standoffish, um, quite reserved, but not a bad guy, just a little bit odd, which is fair. But had he known what had happened the day before, he might not have been so calm. See, on November 7th, at about 5.30 p.m., a person went to the LAPD Topanga station to say that there was a bag outside the Haskell's home containing human remains. 
Quiet Valley as possible, DD4115 Coldstream Terrace, 4115 Coldstream Terrace. Monitor comments, so if you are standing by in front of the Topanga. The police went to see what was going on, that's a disturbing ass call to make, but when they arrived at the Haskell's home in Tarzana, there was nothing there. They knocked on the door, didn't seem like there was anybody home, and seeing nothing strange outside, they had no reason to continue, the police left. However, it was the next day, November 8th, when May's uncle saw her profile was blank, the police got another disturbing call. Next to City Bank on Rubio, possible body inside the trash can. Yeah, gruesome to say the least. Alex, let me just tell you that right now we don't have 100% confirmation from LAPD that this scene on the 4100 block of Coldstream Terrace in Tarzana is related to the scene in Encino, but it surely appears that way, although I just got done with a neighbor who says that he hopes that is not the case at all. From Sky Fox, a pop-up tent covers the remains of a woman wrapped in plastic. Detectives say they found only the torso clad in a bra and what was left of her pants after her legs were cut off. This was at around 6 a.m. A homeless man was rifling through a dumpster in Encino. That's the next neighborhood from Tarzana. As this fellow was digging through the dumpster, he noticed one black bag that was, that was close to the top of the dumpster. And it was weirdly, weirdly shaped. It was like one big piece, long and flat. He noticed the flies buzzing, the smell of meat. Prying open the bag, he saw that sickly white color of blood-drained skin. It was then he realized, well, in there, he found a human torso. Police soon arrived and cordoned off the area. This was, curiously, on the same block as to where Sam Haskell's office was. Now there was a darker side to Sam Haskell. Now, as I know, you say, he, shockingly, he seems as so well adjusted. He loved weapons, especially swords, katanas, daggers. Allegedly, he had a, quite a few in his house, along with crossbows and other instruments of death. The neighbors wouldn't even let their kids play in the Haskell home. They were afraid of the swords he had. May apparently hated them. But there were also reports about Sam going back years, all the way to his college days. When this came out, there's a lot of people talking online. There's even a Reddit, or slash Sam Haskell, and people began sharing their experiences of meeting Sam and knowing what it was like in college and then school, and it's none of it's good. Now this, again, it's just randomers writing online. Could be, you don't know if this is true or not, so just, you know, be aware. Pinch of salt. I went to middle school and high school with him in Calabasas. In seventh grade, when I first met him, he was already a pathological liar with a blinking tick. He was always touching his privates over his pants in class and never got in trouble because his parents were mega donors to the school until he was kicked out for raping another student in junior year. We all knew he was bad news. When he was 18, he did a lot of cocaine and marijuana. I never asked my friends if they were on prescription medications, but he was a little off. His parents could have been loading him up on meds as a kid, or maybe he needed meds and he never got them, I don't know. He would snap on people sometimes when working with them and just cut off relationships with a go fuck yourself. He also lied and made up a lot of stories. He also had run-ins with the law. In 2008, he was arrested and charged with two counts of assault with a deadly weapon. I wonder if it was a sword. And he got three years probation. Sam Haskell was an interesting guy who still not a lot is really known about him. So who he was, you know, behind the lens, there's a lot of question marks there. Though some insight was gained after the investigation began. See, the same day the torso was found in the trash, Sam Haskell was arrested and charged with murder. California murder mystery, the son of a veteran Hollywood exec whose wife and in-laws are missing, is now under arrest after a grim discovery. Samuel Haskell is behind bars as the search intensifies for his wife and in-laws. This morning, new developments in a murder mystery rocking Los Angeles involving a former prominent Hollywood agent's son. Law enforcement officials say they're currently looking for Haskell's wife, May Lee, and her parents, who live with them and their three young children. And while it's unclear how long Haskell's wife and her parents have been missing, police say they responded to a call to the family home last Tuesday after reports of possible human remains in a plastic bag. 
when the officers responded, uh, nothing was located. There was no evidence that uh, allowed the officers to make entry into the home. Um, the bags that, that were described were no longer outside. The following morning, police responding to another call. about Mei Li Haskell and her mother, Yang Zheng Wang, and stepfather, Gao Shan Li, were last seen on November 6th. The last time Mei was seen was by a neighbor. And she said she saw Mei getting into her car, but she seemed sad. She seemed upset. She wasn't her usual, you know, happy-go-lucky self. The next day, November 7th, that same neighbor, their husband would say, they noticed the smell outside. The smell like dead, rotting meat, rotting flesh. But they just thought it was like a, uh, an animal had died somewhere. That same day, Sam Haskell called over some uh, some day laborers to come come help him out with, uh, with some stuff he had to he had in the house. See, these, these day laborers came over to the Haskell home and Sam took him into the garage. And he said, here, listen, check it out. He had three large garbage bags that he wanted removed. He said, there's 500 big ones in it for you. Sam said the bags he was asking them to get rid of were full of rocks, which is like, what? The workers immediately picked up the bags and could tell they were not rocks. The bags were soft and they were heavy. Sam then changed his story and said, oh no, it's, it's actually filled with Halloween decorations. Halloween, remember, was just like a week before all of this. So the laborers got the bags, put them in the truck. They drove, and after driving for about a block, they were like, this is weird. This is really, really weird. Let's, you wanna, should we check, we should check the bags. Do you wanna check the bags? Let's check the bags. They got up, they opened one of the bags. They had a goo, and what they saw was human body parts. They did not look like fake Halloween body parts. They did not smell like fake Halloween body parts. They immediately went back to the Haskell home. They got the bags out and gave him his money back and said, hey, uh, yeah, uh, no, we're, we're good, thanks. The laborers then went to two separate police stations to report this, but were turned away for some reason until they got to the Topongo station and the police took them seriously. However, by the time the cops got to the Haskells, there was no sign of Sam or the tree bags. It was the next day a homeless man found one of the bags just around the corner from Sam's office and called the cops. The torso found in the bag was quickly identified as Mei Li's from A to 2. And CCTV showed a man struggling to lift the bag into the dumpster. The vehicle seen in this CCTV matched Sam Haskell's white Tesla. This footage was taken less than an hour after the day laborers dropped the tree bags back off at Sam Haskell's home. Though it's interesting that he took enough care to dump the body part bags in separate areas, yet his plan A was to just call some day laborers to go and handle it and get rid of it and presume they wouldn't notice anything weird about these bags at all. It's almost like he thought, oh, I guess I should try and hide my horrible crime after all. Sam Haskell was quickly arrested while he was walking at the mall, and the police, going into his home, found blood and more body parts. And the bags, the two other ones that the laborers said were there, have not been found. To date, nobody knows where they are. It's believed the parents are in those other bags. So, what the hell happened? Did Sam murder his wife and then parents out of nowhere? Well, it hasn't gone to trial yet, so we don't know if he did, but Get this, friends would come forward and say May wanted a divorce, had for years. She was sick of him, sick of his TikToks, his bullshit. She was paying for everything and she wanted out, but she was afraid to. Sam Haskell's dad, Sam Sr., very powerful, wealthy, their family was very wealthy, very powerful in town. May was worried that if she did file for divorce, she would lose the custody battle and she would lose her kids. So she was staying, she said she felt trapped. She also would say Sam was physically abusive. He didn't get on with her parents, maybe he snapped too. A friend would say that they met Sam a week before this, and they said, like in a restaurant? They said Sam was acting weird, weirder than usual, and he was like super paranoid. He wouldn't talk to them, he was like waving them away, he was like hiding in the corner. Good morning again, Your Honor, it's Joseph Weimer, it's appearing on behalf of Mr. Haskell, who is present. Deputy District Attorney, Beth Silverman, Samuel Haskell was charged with three counts of murder. He has not yet entered a plea. Their three children are now in the custody of the Department of Child and Family Services and will most likely end up with family. 
As I said, the remains of Maylie's mother and stepfather have not been found, and as this happened over a month ago, the likelihood of them being found gets slimmer every single day. Los Angeles makes a shitload of shite to get rid of. Sam Haskell likely, allegedly, spread the bags out in different dumpsters, and it was pure luck that Maylie was found in the first place. Going into the home, they found more body parts, but, well, a human being can have a lot of body parts. Sam Haskell is currently in jail without bond, probably because his family is so wealthy they could fairly easily bail him out, and he'd be gone like a flash. Very well, Mr. Haskell, you remain held with no bail. Anything else for your records, counsel? No, thank you. Thank you. By the way, I hear you're barking, big dog. Don't know if the shirtless thing in court is intentional or not, but I mean, come on, would not put it past them. So, allegedly, he butchered three people in his own house, perhaps with the swords and knives he loved so much. He then erased May's entire social media profile and hired day laborers to get rid of the body. Day laborers who, if they hadn't brought them back to the Haskell home and said they had kept those bags and called the police, maybe they would find the parents, but they still haven't found them to this day anyway. It's an odd story, um, pretty gruesome and strange. That is it to date, though I think when more information comes out, this story won't get any less strange, that's for sure. I kind of hope he didn't do, I mean, it's all, it's obviously all allegedly, so I kind of hope he didn't do anything, because I really do, do want to see the full version of Harvard Law. What kind of bitch do you think I am? Do I look like I listen to Taylor Swift? Yeah, shopping for your daughter's like the hardest job in the world. Oh well, his TikToks will have to do. Hey, what's up, you guys? Hey, shout out to- Shout out to your jail homies. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you know it absolutely means the world to me that you're here watching the old That Chapter videos. Um, also, huge thank you to everybody who's bought uh, lim the limited edition That Chapter shirts. I was blown away by um, by how, how they're going. They're going like fire. It's amazing. Uh, so thank you, thank you to everybody who uh, who got one. Uh, I really, when you get them, please send me your pictures and stuff. I, I'd be so happy to see them. Uh, and if you still want to get them, you can, the link is here to the store, or you can find it down in the description. They're limited edition, so once they're gone, they're gone, so get them before they're that. So that right wraps it up. Oh, uh, also check out the That Chapter podcast, which has a new episode out every single Monday. There's like over 50 episodes now, if you can believe that. Got some great ones coming up, more stories of Keats Haunted House, um, which he actually told me a story pretty recently that'll be in an upcoming episode that's, um, it's actually very strange, <laughs> really weird. So uh, check it out, and so check out for a whole other host of weird uh, stories, check out the That Chapter podcast. But until the next old video, which will be out in a couple of days, please take care of each other. Please take care of yourselves. Because I love you. Like it.